Hey, what's up everyone? Um, I am working on my computer. I have uh, it busted again. Well, my new my uh, PC, my desktop, um, had a lot of problems starting up today. I finally got it working to the point where I can at least back everything up, and I'm doing that right now, and I'm like 58% into the process, and I've been here for about two hours, and I'm just trying to get everything I need that's valuable off of this thing, and I'll probably reboot it sometime this weekend uh, but while it's up after I finish doing this I'll probably try to get out the next you know Venom vlog or, or two uh, since I already recorded them I was like oh don't let me lose these you know videos again I've already recorded like three of these in the past two days um, and then we had like a really nice person um, named uh, Nick Nicole I think uh, and her her Instagram I'll talk about her in another video but she like wrote me an email and she's in San Francisco and she got a selfie with Tom Hardy and she um, you know edited something like she had like a video of Tom Hardy and Michelle Williams on the set from another angle and I guess she saw the Venom vlog and was like hey I want to you know send you something and if you know and I was like hey I'll make a video on it and she's like oh if you don't it's cool I just wanted to share it with another Venom fan and it just really made my day uh, I have had a rough week walking uh, has been a real toll and um, I am gonna go look tomorrow for a uh, a cane I was gonna try crutches and uh, my mom for my brother's physical therapy she had an extra pair I threw out crutches I had years ago I was like no never again I don't I don't want these as a reminder um, my brother had some ones that folded up and she was like hey we'll send them to you but I was like ah, at work it's gonna be tough like you know maneuvering with them walking my dog is really gonna be a, a pain in the butt with crutches so I figured out ah, just maybe get a cane for a while just to, I'm just trying to keep the weight off it I don't want my leg to get worse so it's not like you know I'm not that bad off I'm just trying to prevent it from getting worse um, and uh, and while I was here I was just you know make it like you know back everything up and I go into these weird places I, I I look back at things like whenever things just seem to go bad for me I try to look back at maybe patterns you know I try to look back at things that maybe I do wrong uh, to see if uh, somehow I led myself to a certain point now obviously a lot of things happen that are out of my hands and out of my control and sometimes you just have rotten luck <laughs> especially if like if you're like me and you're just like a walking Peter Parker uh, you just you just have bad luck sometimes and I think that's just what I'm going through uh, but I have a lot of good things in my life so it's like I'm definitely not complaining about it like if, if it takes a, a computer or two to go down um, it's fine because I, I still have really great people in my life who support me and who help me out um, who motivate me um, and I've been seeing that a lot since I've been back on Facebook with people sharing images uh, five years ago of our work on Soul Star together and a lot of these artists being like hey that was the first time I actually drew a comic book that was is out there in the universe that people can pick up and uh, and that's how I made this I met this other artist and we became friends and we collaborated and they colored my page and you know and, and I learned a lot from them and it, it I to see these relationships after five years grow um, has been amazing and I, so I just now I'm in this like headspace of like oh I, I'm I'm looking back at my life and and uh and and these like past seven years and um you know just the amount of stuff that's hap happened to me in this time it, it's it's ridiculous it's uh but it, but I'm grateful like for the good and bad um and I started thinking about the the darker times and and coincidentally I, well, I wouldn't say coincidentally but maybe just the way things are you know the way the life hands you things that you may, maybe you need um i was uh i was just on facebook yesterday and i saw mike shinoda from lincoln park um post that he was going to release three new songs uh, i think this was two days ago and he was going to release three new songs yesterday and uh, i got excited because i'm a big fan of the guy he's very talented i've gone to their store down on melrose a couple times um and uh, try to get one of those gold uh, sound waves way back when um, and uh, I, I put my name on a mailing list and I think they contacted me but they contacted me when I was dead broke and I was like yeah I, I can't buy it unfortunately um, but uh, I've always liked their shop I like going in there I've always loved their music pretty much since the first Linkin Park album came out I've been like a big fan and when I heard Chester had um, committed suicide I was devastated um, because I didn't know the guy personally, obviously. Um, I've seen Linkin Park Live twice in my life. Um, and uh, so I never knew the guy. It's not like I've talked to him and hung out with him. But there's something about music and music. Like, I know a lot of people get on these tirades nowadays where like, oh, so what? David Bowie died. So what? Prince died. You didn't know these people. And it's like, no, we didn't. But people who really love music or who allow themselves to be affected by music, um, 
have fond memories of it, you know, and the people who create the songs that that, that they have, you know, connection to. Uh, the thing about music is like any form of art, it will reveal things to you about you. Uh, it'll tell you maybe or reveal to you how you maybe really feel about something. Maybe you'll listen to a song that sounds very aggressive, you know, like I did when I was like when Lincoln Park first came out and I got their first album in 2000. Uh, I was 18. I was a very angry young man. Um, I've come from, you know, a, a good childhood and a bad childhood. I would say I, I'm a walking gray matter. Um, I've had, you know, abusive dad and, and, and that whole thing. Um, and then I've run away from home a couple times, even though my mom was not a bad person at all. I just was lashing out because sometimes you do that when you're a teenager. And uh, and I remember their album came out and it kind of was like, I don't know, it was, it was, it, it said something to me and, and it made me realize how maybe angry I was about things that I maybe didn't have control over and then some things I did have control over and and it kind of shined that light on me and then when Meteora came out I think was their second album in 2003 I was moving to Florida and it was at a big change in my life uh, in 2007 they released another album on my when I was moving out to California and so on my way to Florida I bought Meteora on my way to California I bought one of their CDs um, I think in the year I had my aneurysm in 2010 I believe they came out with another album I when you're when you like a band or like an artist of any kind, I think you just, you you realize that they're always there. Like, you know, like as long as they keep making music and art, like you are, you're intertwined with it. It's it's almost cosmic in a way. And Linkin Park was just one of those bands and Mike was one of those artists that, uh, you know, I grew up listening to hip hop and then I also grew up listening to country music. I also grew up listening to techno and rock um, and 80s, you know, like I, I I liked if something was good I liked it that's just how I was always um, and I remember the blending of metal and rap like in the late 90s and early 2000s and a lot of the bands just sound the, sounded the same to me uh, but Linkin Park there was something different about it I was like oh, it's, there's some things here that I feel like some other bands might do but but they're doing it in a, in a way that's interesting and uh, and then they just kept growing and evolving and their last CD they came out with last year in 2017 is a completely different animal than the first album and you know I like that personally because I feel like the albums change you know the people change the artist changes and the 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 things they have to say change you know I don't sound like I was when I was 18 um, sure I get mad and frustrated at things but I I would say I try to rationalize things more I try to handle things differently nowadays because I'm not an 18 year old kid who's who's um, trying to find his place in the world I'm now a 35 year old trying to find his place in the world uh, but for different reasons and their music has always kind of evolved I think with me and helped me evolve when I was too stubborn to see that I needed to move on from things um, and then when I was also trying to move on from things that I, I should have held on to a little bit more that's what music does to you I think and that's what art does to you so yesterday when he dropped these songs I just started listening to them and uh, I was really captivated uh, you know I can't imagine um, from an opposite opposing side to lose a friend that close to you to something like suicide we talk about on my Venom vlog the reason I do that show is because I connect with Eddie Brock on that level this is a man who tried to take his own life and uh, and I am a person who has also tried to do the same thing um, and it's it's something I continue to struggle with, uh, but luckily there's a lot of great people that remind me that it is it, every day that it's less and less of an option to, to go down that road. And I remember when I heard about Chester, it shined a light on me again, like all things that these talented guys did together. Um, uh, unfortunately, this was a tragic thing that happened and it shined a light on me as I saw the you know, because I follow these guys, like I followed them even when I wasn't on Facebook and stuff. I try to follow their their videos, their vlogs. I try to keep up with them, um, and I saw the effect that it had. And I've seen that effect in other people and friends of mine who have lost someone to suicide. Um, but it wasn't. There was something very that just like was very clear to me. And and seeing how Mike was struggling with it and how other of the band members were struggling with it, it uh, it it made me realize how people close to me how lost they would have felt and how how 
you know, they wouldn't have felt like they had any closure. They would be wondering why. They would ask all these questions. They would, they would think, you know, like, well, what did he do it to? Because it, it, he thought it was going to a better place. Was he in that much pain that just being here was too tough for him? The, all these questions that come with, with the, you know, the, the aftermath of suicide, um, and uh, and Mike, like any artist put it into songs you know he was like I, I i don't know how to express myself in any other way i'm going to work on this and it made me think a lot about my book alan vital a couple years ago i i had done this kickstarter for a book called alan vital which i'm still actually surprised there were people that haven't got their copy yet so i'm still sending some out uh, just an operator error on my end of names i missed and and not being organized and you know just being an idiot basically um but i will say the book it technically isn't really done either like I have a form of it it's in print form it's out there there's a couple videos on this YouTube channel there's a like a playlist folder for Elan there's some stuff that is like um, you know complimentary stuff to the book the book was meant to be a multimedia thing where you could like as you're reading the digital copy click on a movie and stuff like that and I had someone who's gonna help me with it and then that kind of fell apart and then I'm just try to learn some of it my own and I'm just too stupid with technology to to have learned it and done it by myself so the book is like this unfinished project of mine um, that I, now that I'm learning editing, I think I can make a movie version of it. I can make like, you know, the images sliding by. I have voiceover. A lot of very talented people were nice enough to lend their voices. I made a book on tape version and I'm gonna try to overlay that with the visuals of the book and try to make like a movie version. This will be something I'll be working on pretty much all year and I'll try to release at the end of the year. And the reason why this, these songs with Mike kind of kick-started me getting back into that uh, while I'm you know trying to wrap up Neverland which is my new book I'm working on um, I was I was like you know I, I feel unfinished like Elan is a very personal thing and I think I failed in the execution of that story I failed in the delivery of how it should have been told and I think this like movie version that I'll put up on YouTube um, is is the right way to tell it um, this is a story that is me dealing with my not just my health issues but the the time i try to take my own life and it is literally it is a, a, a direct reflection of that time period of my life um of leading up to and not to get too political on here but everything leading up even to how i thought right before the election and we found out who was going to be our new president it was like literally like this whole two years of my life as i started this project i was like all right i'm this is going to be this and it was like looked very basic the first version of Elan Vital you'll probably never see it was really garbage and it was just like a page and it would have like a, a drawing on it and then some text and then the next page and it was like just it was just boring it looked boring it didn't have a soul and the whole point of the book was you know that's a story of a robot trying to get a soul uh, or, or being told by his creators that he has a soul and now he has to tap into it and he has to learn how to feel and he has to learn how to do this stuff um and uh, and it's it's and the basically the art the you know the way they're trying to teach the robot is we want you to create art uh we don't want you to use like you know uh you know coding or you know, we want you to like download hand movements from people who paint and stuff and just copy what they do we want you to actually feel something and create something. We want you to create a song. We want you to create, uh, you know, a, like a movie, a documentary or something. We want you to create a piece of art, like a street art uh, painting, um, you know, surrealism, expressionism. Like we want you to create these things and see what it reveals about you. And it was the most meta thing I've ever created because as I'm doing this, I'm going on the same journey as my creator or my character uh my creator yeah it's meta just circle circle um but my my character of alan vital the robot uh he is trying to tap into what kind of person he wants to be um and i was doing that as i was making this book and really what i came to the conclusion of at the end is i just need to be a listener like there are there are these characters in in marvel called the watchers and they really don't they're not supposed to do anything they're not supposed to interfere they're just supposed to observe and document in a way um i didn't want to be that detached from people i but so i wanted to be involved and i thought well what's what's where is my place and um and i feel like listening is where i wanted to be and that and i think the reason is is because i'm bad at talking sometimes i lash out i'm very emotional uh, anyone who knows me online who's ever been unfriended by me you know I apologize like the, the, I've shut down conversations that I probably should have had with people and uh, and I 
let it I let things slip away and I let people slip away and I didn't listen and I thought that was my my biggest flaw was um <clears throat> was not listening to people and uh and that's why I made that was the the journey I felt like I landed on at the end of Alon was okay Alon needs to learn this too Alon needs to learn that he is judging people and he is pushing people away with his his passion his he's acting out in ways that he you know is is something he learned to me. He needs to learn how to control, and uh, and that's what I learned about myself. And so the book is like deeply personal, obviously. Um, but I don't think it's very interesting to a lot of people. I think people who don't know my health issues, my story, who haven't listened to Harmontown, like I don't think anyone outside of that realm probably would care too much about Alon. So it's like a very niche audience, and I even feel like half of the Harmontown people probably wouldn't even care about Alon uh, or the story that goes on in it. So that's why I figured, well, you know were years away you know years after it was kind of completed in book form i'll still sell the book form online but i think we're going to release a, a different version of it and put it up on youtube hopefully by the end of the year and just hearing mike's stuff and hearing just him be so raw and personal about his feelings um kind of shook that in me because when i was making a lawn the two artists i was listening to the most were uh, Lincoln Park and, and all their side projects like you know um, like uh, Fort Minor and stuff um, and then their soundtracks for like the raid anything Mike did like I was listening to all that on one end and I was listening to like Bjork on the other end and I was like and all these songs about um, human emotions and things that she you know tapped into in her music and then I was listening to like the, the lyrics and the words that these guys would use and both kind of inspired me so when I saw this pop up today um, or yesterday, and I saw these songs, I just uh, I lit up. I was like, "This is, this is, you know, uh, this are, these are beautiful songs, and uh, and they express how someone who's hurt feels. You know, he, he goes from everything from sadness to anger to um, to regret. You know, there's there's all these stages of grief in these three songs, and uh, and I can't imagine it was easy for Mike to create this stuff." Uh, and he talks about how they sing at the Hollywood Bowl, which I watch that live on YouTube. I'm, I can't go to concerts anymore. There's too many people, especially something like that. I knew would be very emotional. Um, I had a chance to go and I didn't because being surrounded by so many people feeling so much would have overwhelmed me. I wouldn't have handled it too well and I wouldn't have enjoyed the show. So I watched it at home on YouTube and uh, to see all these people come out and perform with, with Mike and, and the band was just amazing. So... Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm in this weird headspace tonight, I, I got, you know, a lot of, a lot of work I got ahead of me, and I just figured I'd record something, just something to post for you guys that's easy, that I don't have to edit, that I could just ramble, that you guys can just watch, you can know why Venom Vlogs are running a little behind right now, just a ton of tech problems this week, and it, it happens, but I appreciate you guys being patient with me, um, and, uh, and I just wanted to, sh I don't know, open up share a little bit about me i think a lot of people out there some of the new subscribers maybe just don't know who i am they're just like oh he's a guy who does the venom show and he just talks about tom hardy and, and venom stuff but uh but no i'm actually like this uh 35 year old i'll be 36 soon um you know i'll be eight years now post brain aneurysm surviving um but post rupture um it's yeah it's it's like uh it's been quite a journey this this life has been quite a journey um so I'm, you know, I'm grateful. If you're out there and you're watching this, uh, thank you. And uh, if anything inspires you, you know, let me know down in the comments. Tell me a little bit about yourself uh, if you want. Um, what did, did you have a reaction to Chester's passing? Did you listen to these three songs? I'm going to put links to all three of these uh, songs by Mike in the description box and a link to uh, his website where I think you can buy the music. But you can also buy it on iTunes, uh, Amazon. I bought on Amazon. I think they were like $3.50 for all three songs. I mean, talk about a steal. I, the, the, the lyrics in these songs are... They really resonate with me, and especially the first one. It was a little too on the nose. Like the first one, the first track is a uh, uh, place to start, which I love that song, and um, it's a nice short song. And he starts with "I don't have a leg to stand on," and I was like, literally, <laughs> when I when I hit play on this, I was like walking over to like uh, fold my clothes last night when I was uh, doing laundry, and I was limping, <laughs> and I heard "I don't have a leg to stand on," and I was like what <laughs> i was like what'd you say to me mike you make in front of my limp um and uh yeah i don't know i just had a re it immediately hooked me so i i like brought a table over and was folding clothes and sitting and listening to the track and uh and uh, yeah i just found it you know connected with it and uh and i i i feel his pain so i wrote him a message today i wrote mike on facebook and said like 
you know, I know you feel hurt and confused, and I, I've been processing how people feel about friends and loved ones they know that that have left them, you know, with through suicide, and uh, and I've been processing that these past like you know six months or so, and and I've been um, I know from experience as someone who's tried to do it, it's it's I know a lot of people just want to write it off as a selfish act. Um, it is in a way, absolutely, but it's from my experience it was a release you know it's a this world is is tough already and when you throw these obstacles and these these tragic painful memories that guys like Chester have of his childhood people like me have of our of my childhood um especially when I went years without these memories and they just start flooding in and I'm remembering the good and the bad and then there'll be days where it's only bad memories and I'm I'm trying to sort them and decide well does that make me a bad person does just screwing up you know does that mean you know I'm not a better person now because I screwed up um, can I become a better person it made me think all these thoughts and uh, and I just know Chester didn't mean to he didn't do it to hurt any of us you know and that was my message to Mike he didn't do it to hurt you so don't take that away from this experience um, he loved you Mike he loved us the fans um, and he loved what he did making music and that's what we should remember and uh, we shouldn't shouldn't be mad at him um, We could be confused for him and the way he left us, but it's it don't be mad at him it, He didn't mean to hurt us uh, And that's my message to anyone out there who loses someone to this. They didn't mean to hurt you um, and I didn't mean to hurt try to hurt people that were close to me um, And I'm trying to learn from that. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys later Peace.